last time on Utopia Podcast, Hardy fought the hooded creatures dwelling in Mel's basement only to be locked inside. After a hard battle, Morgus finds a illusory wall leading to a stairwell down. Before moving forward, the party takes a short rest. Now that they've made their way down the stairs and through a dark, hand dug tunnel hallway, they find another one of its creatures and prepare to fight. That is where we find them. Godfrey, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run up to the creature. Mm-hmm. You said it had red gems in its yeah, eyes. They're kind of glowing. Hmm. I try to stab it in its eyes. Yeah. Give me an attack. The silver short sword. That's bad. It's like uh, uh, eight. Okay, yeah, that doesn't hit. Okay, I will use a key point to flurry of blows. Okay. Trying to punch it again for an eleven, and then uh, seventeen. Uh, seventeen will hit. Sweet. Takes. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. Nice. Um, I need you to make another constitution saving throw as the power in this creature's eyes seems to continue to just bear into your soul. Mm. That's a problem. Okay, that is a 21. That saves. So we go to Ziba. You're one of the closest to Ed at the back with Morgus. You see, uh, to Livy, God damn it. As you see Livy just collapse. Um, not breathing, not moving. Uh, do, do I get the sense that this is only happening because I am looking at it now? Or that this is different than the other ones that we faced up above where looking at it wasn't like too much big of an issue? Give me just a straight intelligence check for Godfrey. <laughs> Natural oh, 20 yes, yes. For a 19. The red rubies in their eyes are different and they're emanating magic and you feel like maybe this is what this is happening. I try not to look at this one. How am I supposed to be able to tell if Libby is dead or just laying on the ground? Give me a minute. That's a check. good question. That would be your action. Well, I feel like that's what I would do. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. Are you dead or alive? Like, I don't know if he's paralyzed or if he's just like, is if he's actually dead, he never breathes. How? <laughs> Godfrey, turn that off. <laughs> Medicine check. <laughs> oh, no. This is not going to go. A dirty one. A dirty uh-huh. one? <laughs> yeah, because there's a two, but I have a negative You have no modifier. idea. You have no idea. I'm equally still confused. <laughs> Bonus action is he dead or that? alive? <laughs> Did Jim just die? I don't know. This is very new information to me. I'm just freaking out on the floor. <laughs> All right, uh, that's to Libby. Give me a uh, death save. <laughs> Can Dampiers die? I really have genuine questions. You know what? That's a good <laughs> philosophical debate that we'll find out very soon. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ah! 
Uh, roll. 13. All right. One success. That's to Scylla. Uh, Scylla immediately drops to where Livy is. Uh, Livy was like quite a few behind, right? Mm. Uh, so Scylla turns her back uh, and like spins and drops and grabs Livy kind of by the side of the cheeks like this and five times on each, so ten, <laughs> slaps you on the side of your cheeks <laughs> and says, get the fuck up, get the fuck up. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm going to give him ten points of healing. <laughs> oh, nice. Play on hands, baby. <laughs> Wake up! Get the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Bonus action or movement? <laughs> you have probably about like five feet left of movement. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it to kind of get oh. back on my feet. And turn back around and take those, you know, take as many as I can uh, back towards it. Yeah. Just kind of for flavor as well. I'm going to start gripping that that chain again. Cool. And that's me done. All right. Next up is the hooded creature as it makes a fist attack towards Godfrey, the closest person. What, Lily? That's a nat one. As it goes to swipe, but you're too fast and it falls to one knee. Somewhat prone, looking down at the ground. As a bonus action, you watch as that aura from the other two seems to extend out, slowly filling the hall. Oh. The weird thing to wake up on. That's Tamorgus. Okay, I think watching all of this happening uh Morgus is just going to immediately plunge himself mentally into magic his mm -hmm. eyes are going to flash uh blue this time there's going to be some like gold sparks and this is a little bit different flavor than usual um but he's just going to reach out toward that creature and he's going to start making a fist very, very, very slowly. And um, the the ruby eyes are going to start flashing with gold sparks. I'm going to cast magic missile directly at those eyes Yeah. to try to break one or both of them. Great. So I'm going to roll my... Th uh, I'm casting this at first level. I'm going to roll 3d4 here and add one each time. So that is one plus one for two, four plus one for five, and four plus one for five for a total of 12 force damage. You fully watch as this creature who's hunched, hands one knee on the ground facing the dirt, you watch as Godfrey, these little missiles uh, in Morgus flavor, whiz past you, all hitting the left ruby and you watch as gem shards slowly fall to the ground and the creature cries out one eye down oh. one to go okay um da -da 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 -da. uh that's that's gonna be my turn um i would like to i think i'm right next to livy because i was second to last so i'm already right there mm -hmm. so i'm gonna stay where i'm at that's gonna be my turn all right that's all the way back to godfrey All right, uh, I'm going to, as I'm about to start this turn, do I feel like that presence, like that, I mean, I haven't been affected by the eyes at all. I'm just going to keep swinging okay. at him. So first attack, silver short sword, is that 20 that to is. hit? Or uh, five points of silvered piercing damage. Cool. Then I'm going to use another key point to flurry of blows. Mm -hmm. So I punch at it, then 18 to that hit. Hits. 
for eight points of non-magical bludgeoning, and then a natural one. All right. This creature, as you boom, boom, make all these hits, um, where, what does this look like? Where are you hitting them as they're slightly, not all the way prone, but just kind of close to the ground? I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? They're kind of hunched over onto the ground. They're not all the way prone, so you don't get advantage. But as you hit this creature, where mm-hmm. are you hitting them? What does this look like as you go for them? I'm still trying to hit them in okay. the head. So the first slash comes through, and I'm trying to like almost pin the hood down over its eyes. Then the second unarmed strike, I'm hit like clapping it right in its ears on its right side to try to pop it out of socket. And with the third hit that misses, I try to come down on the back of the head, but I imagine it moves and Godfrey just punches the ground. Yeah, um, I'll say with a nat one, as you go to hit it in the back of the head, um, you kind of miss and lose your balance and tumble over on top of the creature, knocking you both prone. Okay. All right, that's to Ziba. The creature is prone. Livy is awake, barely. Uh, and Godfrey has tumbled over top of them and is also prone. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I'm going to immediately assume that the same thing happened to Godfrey that happened to Livy. <laughs> they both ended up on the ground. So, <laughs> I would like to try and approach this pile of Godfrey and Creature. But, and I don't know if you're going to tell me if this is capable in this narrow rock way. I'm not sure who I'm climbing over to do so. Mm -hmm. But now that my other friends come down, I'm immediately just going for the head of that creature because I got to turn it off. I don't know what it's doing. Yeah, People give me your attack. People keep dropping to the ground. You kind of have to squeeze past Morgus, who's just illuminated, just release these magic missiles and Scylla on the ground, helping Livy as you head over and like try to deduce where Godfrey's legs end and the Bodak's head and neck begin, and you're able to find it. You have advantage on this roll. All right, that's good. I wouldn't want to accidentally hit someone. <laughs> You said that way too soon. You said that before you rolled. <laughs> 18. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> it's a good thing it's an advantage when I can talk about it. <laughs> All right, let me just take my non magical weapon down on it. It is a whole eight. Is that Slash half? It. Just total eight. Total eight. All right. It still doesn't look good. You guys watch as the same, like, weird blood clotted grossness kind of comes out of the creature. It's facing this fresh slash on the back of its neck. Um, Stop we downing have to my friend! <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, okay. Livy, like, woozily stands up and, like, Shakes the dirt off his butt. Don't look it in the eye. Got it. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Oh, God. Buddy. It sounds like he had a bad dream. All right. All right. Like he flaps himself a little bit. So. Um. And I go and touch both uh, Dilla and um, more uh, and I'm Godfrey. And I like, can I? Are they close enough that I can touch both of them? You can't touch Godfrey, but you can touch Morgus. And Godfrey's like not actually like unconscious so- like I am, right? He's just beating, like he's just on top of him. You're not sure. You watched him go to punch him in the head and then lose balance and fall over top. Okay, cool. Uh, then I'm gonna... Sorry, I'm not close enough. I'm gonna use a, thir- a second level spell to do heroism on BD and... Uh... Oop, you guys have hero heroism now. A willing creature you touch is imbued with bravery until the spell ends. The creature is immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit points. 
equal to your spellcasting modifier at this then when this blah, blah, blah. so yeah you get uh uh plus six temporary hit points Ooh. thank you awesome. Libby Yay. bonus action or movement I am always a hero but now I'm more of a hero now it's official <laughs> no I'm just gonna stay I'm just gonna chill back here great uh, Solo that's to you Libby has stood up Ziba has climbed over top of you and around Morgus and you're still in this tight tunnel, kind of all cramped around each other as this fight ensues. Uh, Tilla sort of squeezes forward, and uh, I'm gripping, I'm gripping that pendant now with the sort of soft underside of, of my armor. And uh, I've got, <laughs> oh man, my invasive brain! I've got Arthur fist in one hand. <laughs> I'm I'm ah! mad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I fucking I ruin everything for myself. <laughs> you get inspiration for that. Amazing. Uh, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know. I never use it, but it felt like it felt like you, it was necessary. You could use inspiration to roll any d20 roll at advantage. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. You're welcome. I like the other DM. <laughs> <laughs> Scylla grips her pendant and starts walking forward and she's gripping it with that underside of her palm. And I'm frustrated. And as I do, uh, I wince and I realize I've I've drawn blood. Uh, just a slight, but like a paper cut, like one of those annoying paper cuts. And I hold it back up and I go, what? That work. And I hold it back up again. Uh, and I'd like you to please make another wisdom DC. Uh, wisdom save. Oh, that's a five. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to cast Turn the Faithless. Mm. Ooh. Uh, so you're turned for a minute until you take damage, and I turn to everybody and I go, get the fuck out of here. They turn towards you, away from you? Uh, it just says the creature is... Turn. Hang on. Uh, channel divinity on a failed save creature is turned for one minute. A turned creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can. It can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. Uh, it also can't take reactions. For its action, it can only use dash or try and escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. If there's nowhere to move, uh, the creature can use the dodge action. Great. All right. Uh, does this feature only work on uh, Fey and Fiends, though? Mm, I couldn't. Ah, uh, Fey and Fiends. Yeah, painful for Fey and Fiends. Okay. Cool. Goes to the creature's turn. As it's prone on the ground, it stands. And looks back at Scylla. That's one ruby eye. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Cool. The five. All right. <sighs> Stop. Gonna t- All of you guys stop falling on the ground. All right. I don't know if what you're happening to you guys, but you take 29 necrotic damage as this ruby hits your eyes. Oh. And you watch as anyone who sees this happen or is close to Scylla, you see the eyes, the whites, the pupil, the color all turn black in this black. The same way that you've seen it crawl up Godfrey's arm just spreads across Scylla's face in this weird, inky mask. Can I clarify something? Is necrotic considered disease? Mm-mm. No. Okay. As you were. Fuck me up. Nice try, though. Your um, spell doesn't seem to have worked, Scylla. (laughs) As it ends its turn. You're still up, right, Liz? 
It's to me now, mm -hmm. correct? Oh, okay. So, Scylla, this, does this, Scylla didn't collapse like Livy did. This is just, uh, I cast fuck you at Scylla, mm -hmm. pretty much. Okay. Yeah, Morgus is, uh, gonna almost growl a little bit with frustration at the situation. Uh, do I, do I have a, like, a clear shot at this thing, at that ruby? I know it's a, like a confined space. You can. Depends. You tell me if you want to look at it or not. Oh, man. I don't want to. I want to conserve resources. Um, yeah, I am going to, uh, as, as he's frustrated, um, he's going to ball his fist and then release, uh, uh, kind of form a claw and then there's going to be this burst of uh, blue and gold flame and then he's just going to look up and sling it right at that other ruby eye. Mm -hmm. So Alright, this that attack risk. Um, is normal but I will okay. need you to make a save at the end of your trip. Okay, go, we'll go for that. Yeah. Oh, 19 on the die plus uh, six for uh, 25 to hit. Hell yeah. Okay. And then, all right, six fire damage. Beautiful. It's still up, but you watch as the fire just starts to crack the ruby itself in one of its eyes. It's not all the way out. You're not sure if it can okay. still uh, cast at this point, but then you feel that okay. gaze just worthering into your soul as you make another sure. constitution saving. Constitution. Natural fucking 20. I will send you a picture right now. Hell yeah. Good to go. Yeah, that is that's a 25 total. All right. That, that's going to be my turn. I'm just going to stay right there. Cool. That is to Godfrey again. Okay, uh, Godfrey uh, kips up from the ground using half of his movement, then takes his silver longsword and tries to stab it right into the back of this creature, like through mm -hmm. its heart. Uh, it's uh, 15 yep. to hit. That does six points of piercing cool. damage. Silvered piercing. Still, Still up. up. Barely. Okay. Uh, bonus action. Key point. Flurry of blows. I'm going to try to hit it. Yeah, that's a 25 oh, yeah. to hit. For seven points of non-magical bludgeoning Hell damage. Yes. Still up. And then an 18 yep. to hit. For eight points of non-magical bludgeoning what damage. What like? Dang. Yeah, so Godfrey comes up, he stabs through with his silvered longsword and then leaves it there, going into like a, a headlock around this thing's neck. And then he just, in a quick motion, just snaps the neck. Sends it full, looking behind it as it drops to the ground. Amazing. And he takes the silvered short sword out of it. So that happens. You all watch this happen as we leave combat. Okay, then Godfrey's going to reach into his pouch of medical supplies and hand something to Scylla for her to eat uh, to help with the necrotic damage that has washed over her face and then moves over to Livy to try to like hit him with another scent of like some sort of salts or fragrance to help wake yep. him up. So I'm using two charges from my healer's kit. Uh, Scylla, as, uh, as Godfrey's passing this to her, Scylla is, like, trying to brace herself against this dirt wall and, like, really struggling to stand. <laughs> uh, takes it and shoes it bit. Yep. Next time, let's not start this with, do you trust me? <laughs> <laughs> so, Scylla, you heal for 12. And Livy, you heal for 13. Cool. All right. Godfrey, I assume you pick your torch up off the ground where it was still burning mm -hmm. with the magical flame that Morgus had 
imbued it with. It's probably been about 40 minutes since that spell was cast. You're traveling. I I can re-up that if you want. It's a cantrip. So, that's easy. Do you continue down the tunnel? We made it this far. Yeah, but how how are you two? Villa, Livy? Um. <gasps> well enough. Um, I'll probably live. It's a joke, I'll live. It's also another joke I'm taking. Yeah, you, you go. Yeah, I, I get Do it. These things are extraordinarily right? dangerous. There's no shame in us turning back. If we need to. The chanting has stopped. I don't, I don't think we can. I don't like that at all. You know, the only thing worse than, you know, suspicious noises is no suspicious noises. I think we just have to continue on. Marcus sort of right. takes a breath and kind of puts his puts his chin on his on his chest for a second and then slowly nods. You continue on. Okay. So uh, nods as well. I'll take point here. Okay. 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 It doesn't take long. So it falls behind uh, and kind of protects from the back. As you follow the torchlight that Godfrey has as he leads you down the tunnel, it's maybe about five or ten minutes before you see a green shimmering outline Hmm. in what looks to be an arch way. And Godfrey, as you get closer, you can look through this mist magical barrier of some sort. And inside you see a few people Filling about in a cave basement of some kind. There are chairs and tables and cots and bedding and a fire in the center. And there seem to be these drawings all over the walls that have been made in haste of snakes and sleep and knives. Kissing. I'm sorry, have snakes what and knives kissing? Snakes, comma, sleep, comma, knives, comma, and kissing. Two figures kissing. Uh. Just, so it's like four figures on the it's wall. It's just like a montage of all these things that kind of covers the stone walls of the interior. It's hard to see clearly through like the green, smoky, magical barrier that's here. But that's not kissing see. anyone to get through there. What I'm not that? kissing anyone to get through there. This is some of the things we got to do to get in the store. Count me out, cooties. You guys are all great, but... Uh, <laughs> do, the, do the figures inside look like they can see through this doorway that we're looking you through? You don't seem to be alerted by your presence. <laughs> As... Morgus is looking at this doorway. Um, does it remind me of any particular types of magical effects that I've read about or seen before? You'd be familiar with lots of different types of like magical barriers in general. And you would know that it's such a... It's kind of a commonplace spell here. It's used for security for businesses and things. But does it, it takes a skilled... Of- practitioner of magic to place it there and each Mm -hmm. practitioner that places them has their own unique flavor that they kind of imbue into it does this kind of remind me of the field that I saw at the bookish brow it's similar perhaps something a little different it's similar similar, but this is more this is this is even higher leveled magic 
This is a physical impenetrable barrier, whereas before it was just sort of an alarm. Mm. I'm not sure if we're able to even get past that. That that field you're seeing there is that's a physical barrier. Give me an arcana check. Sure. Uh, 18. With an 18, I would say <clears throat> Morgus as a wizard can take time to learn how to take this barrier down. Be about an hour. What happens if yeah, we just I'll, hit it really hard? It's another option. I don't recommend that. <laughs> um, I mean, there's nothing stopping you. I'm not going to stop you, but uh, if we've got time, I can look into this and see. I can sort of it? pluck at the wheel a little bit and see if there's a loose thread here or there. Take it down, unravel it, as it were. It's going to take an hour. I don't even know if I brought my card game. The rest of you can gain the benefits of a short rest as Morgus does this. Morgus cannot, as he is focused on taking down this barrier. Yeah. That's what you I'm all would a, like to do. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good. I had a short rest before. And you weren't yeah. mesmerized by the eyes. Psst. Hey, come here. No, no, no. I'm not here to tell you anything new about dice. You know, they're weirdly collectible. They're totally necessary. They're crucial aspects of gameplay that you just never seem to have enough of, but I do want to tell you about our new partnership that all of you could benefit from. Look, Ogopogo Gaming is a 100% women owner, queer owner, dice and gaming company out of Philly, and they've offered to give all Utopia viewers 10% off online orders. Just visit ogopogogaming.com. That's O-G-O-P-O-G-O gaming.com and use promo code Utopia. That's U-T-O-P-I-A at checkout. You'll get 10% off your dice and you'll be supporting us. It's so cool. It's awesome. Now go get some dice and roll them. Oh, hell yeah, it's a 19. Let's go. So, Morgus does have a little notebook. And, like, God, Godfrey, you would expect and silly you would probably expect that morgus would take out the notebook review some notes and start making maybe i don't know some interesting calculations or just like stream of consciousness logic you know ju just to, to to string his thoughts together he doesn't do that this time um i think as morgus has been uh he's gonna take a different tack He's going to take out that orb for a second and he's going to look up maybe at a specific point of, uh, is, is, is there like, does on, on this field, I know it's got like that green misty quality. Does it also like bend light a little bit like the surface of water or is that just in my head? Um, it's more like you walked into a noxious bog. And the vapors cool. of the poison are visible through the waves of motion that kind of just happen within this barrier. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna look at those the sort of like the waves and the swirls of that like sort of mist. And then you'll hear this like click click. And then he'll reorient the orb in another click click. And a few more clicks. And he's just gonna sit there. And he'll shift the orb from hand to hand and sort of like weigh it. And every now and again, his eyes will flash um, with maybe a brief little bit of white or gold or blue at the same time that the orb does, like a little symbol. Um, I am going to be delving into my memories to 
as, as, as this is something that Morgus is exploring more and more lately, especially earlier in the tunnel with that flash of that image from before, I'm going to be taking that approach just as I, just for flavor as I do this to figure out um, the right place to unravel this barrier. Yeah. You click, click, turn, pop. The rest of you really familiar with this noise from your evenings downtime with Morgus kind of maybe at this point might find it comforting sort of like a dishwasher washing machine in the background of your home and doesn't take very long Morgus as you grow more adept with this orb that was just with you as you awoke and found your way to the carousel court and you find yourself thrown back into the weave. You have to kind of sit against the wall to steady yourself. And in front of you is swamp. There are trees with big roots sticking out of the ground. And you see a very large castle back behind you. There are others in white and blue gold-trimmed robes walking through this swamp you come to a cave and they're kind of bickering they're like breakfast was horrible why do they think that we want gooseberries nobody likes gooseberries can they give us something better especially on a day like this i like gooseberry <laughs> you like everything just under his breath. <laughs> you know it's food's good and the professor that's leaving you heads through the woods leads you to a cave opening. He makes a gesture. It's this lizard folk man. You have three hours apiece to each open these caves. And he sweeps his arm across the expanse of the swamp. And there are caves everywhere. And there are about ten of them that now form this purpley, misty wall you each spread out, having one in front of you, spending the time to get it undone. Give me an intelligence check. Or an sure. arcana. Probably yeah. arcana. Do that arcana. Ah, e, 13. I'm going to roll a few of my own. Okay. <laughs> You're the third person done. Okay. The top percentage of your class. And as you come back to, you remember fondly the success of younger you succeeding at this thing. You remember how to undo it. And you begin to pull at the magics to do so. What's the rest of the party doing? Trying to show Scylla my collection of shiny rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Which Scylla is admiring because she is on the ground, uh, kind of hugging her knees with her chin on them and just sort of looking over what Dee Dee's showing her. This one I found on the road when I was trying to look for secret tunnels, but I couldn't find them, and I found this instead. This one I found on the beach when I was looking for secret tunnels, but I couldn't find one, and I found this instead. This one I found... <laughs> what are they for? What? Why do you take them? You never... Well, I guess there's multiple reasons. One is, like, you just get joy, because look at them. Joy. You know? Yeah. Joy. And then also, like, what if you need a rock? Also, distraction? Got it. Rock. Best distraction. Scylla reaches down to, <laughs> to her side and just sort of blindly fumbles her hand around. Uh, can I pick? Is there a rock? Yeah, there's again. There's like clumps of dirt. Some small it's stones. not a pretty rock though, and so therefore your distraction is just not good. How much joy do you get out of that rock compared to look at this rock? I mean, 
I suppose whatever brings you joy brings you joy. My point is, but look how pretty. You normally never want for a rock. Well, and then you can make up games with the rocks. Like if you find round rocks, you can play the game. Where you try to shoot them all into the center of a circle you draw on the ground. Oh. Okay. I. I, I think I, I think you need more of an imagination, so like you clearly do not get how great these rocks are. But it's okay. I'll just show them to oh, someone. I, who I think I rocks. <laughs> I think I see what this is, child. What's Libby, what are Libby and Godfrey doing? I mean, it's hard to follow up with that. <laughs> um. Uh, I think Libby because it's dark and he's hoping that Godfrey is human and can't really see in the dark he like picked out one of his books um, that like has a cover of a very boring novel but in actuality it's one of his romance romance books and he's just reading love it Godfrey has sat down and is sketching in the sketchbook that Morgus had given him, trying to use that as meditation. And, uh, I don't know. I, I suppose someone with a passive in perception high enough notices at some point he starts to sketch like more vigorously. And it almost looks like there's a second pair of ha- like shadowed hands over his own as he's sketching, but just for a moment before they dissipate. I mean, and he puts count. down the notebook. I'm too into describing and these rocks. Right. Saw nothing. Looks into his bag for something else to distract Great. him. Eventually, maybe about thirty minutes in, whoever is closest to the mist, Morgus for sure, and anyone else that's looking, you watch as one or two of the people start looking around. And they're chatting in Elvish, and it's the same tone as the chanting. It hasn't gotten louder. You get the sense that this wall blocks sound as well as everything else. And those who understand Elvish, you hear them say, Someone's poking at my barrier. How can that be? What is going on? They know we're here. Really? We're in their heads. <clears throat> they they know we're messing with the barrier. Morgus, as you have dug into your memories and, and found this and, and remembered what to do with it, you know this is a concentration spell. Someone has been holding this. And so it makes sense that they would know if someone's tampering with it. Well, they didn't put a sign saying you couldn't mess is, with it. Am I still in the depths of my memory right now, or have I, I returned from that and can now start to you've, execute what I've remembered? Yeah, you've certainly returned and are in okay. the midst of executing. Yeah, I think as, you know, Morgus might have a couple hands on it, and it, the way he plays with that orb in his hand is is, is kind of like an expert us uh, uh, Someone who's like an expert with a Rubik's Cube. Hmm. Right, where he's he's just using individual fingers to like turn various parts of it, and he just sort of like cocks his head a little bit and shares that information with the party, um, but also says, "So essentially, as this is about to go down, because they're concentrating on this, we'll want to be very ready to act as soon as it comes down." Right. Oh, got it. Shh, shh, get the fuck back of my bag. That is it. Thanks again for listening. As always, find us on all the socials. Support us on Patreon if you'd like. We have $1 tiers all the way up to $30 tiers where you get special in-game letters written by the players mailed to your house directly. Get percentages off the Utopia store. Um, monthly minutes access. 
a behind the autumn moon studio screen podcast with me and lots of other stuff uh we have lots going on all the time so if you're enjoying it let us know by giving us a review rating us liking subscribing following watching all the things that count as currency in this weird ass digital world we live in we appreciate you so so much Intro and outro by 0 o'clock. Everything else by myself in the cast. Have a great day.